one of the best advice I can give you either as a normal person or military member is to renew <laughs> it. <A> normal person. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordi Beck. And I'm Elaytra Beck. And together we are Around the World and Beck. And our last video was a PCS slash moving announcement. Mm -hmm. So we thought, what better way to talk a little bit more about it than a video about the most asked questions of what it's like to move to another country or most asked PCS questions. Yeah, that was a tongue twister. And for those of you that are our British or non-American viewers, uh, PCS is Permanent Change of Station. It's basically a military move. And uh, we will be moving about every two to three years until we either hit the button, the button, and get out or um, I retire, one of the two. So we are gonna kick things off. We've got 10 questions we're gonna go over. And the first one is kind of England centric, but it is, what was your biggest culture shock? And we went over this a little bit in our five questions video, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw it to you. Number one, biggest culture shock. I think right away moving here was the driving. I think it was very scary, a lot of unknowns. Uh, it's a lot more than just, hey, I'm gonna hop on the other side of the car on the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. It's reading the rules, the unspoken rules of the road and just figuring out how everything works. Like in the States, going at a roundabout, everyone freezes up here, it's like, <laughs> go, go, go. So yeah. big culture shock. I think it's definitely made me a more vigilant driver yeah. by driving yeah, over absolutely. here. Absolutely. What about you? Um, I would probably say just like the slight language differences. It's not crazy. It's not like we're living in Italy or Germany or Japan where the language is just wildly different. It's just those subtle differences that kind of remind you that, you know, you're, you're not in America anymore. <laughs> we're the ones with the accents here. All right, question number two, Jordan, I'm gonna throw this one at you because you handle this one for us. Phones, how did we do that? what's going on with it <laughs> so the way that we've handled it or are still handling it <laughs> is we stuck with our provider in the states with t-mobile um, they allow for um, unlimited data unlimited texting with really cheap phone calls and it just made sense for us to keep our u.s number so we can contact friends and family mm -hmm. um, but it is not the cheapest option um, while it does help to go to any country in europe to just instantly work, um, it is not fast. It no. gets the job done, but at what cost, really? Yeah. Um, I think it was also a good idea for us because we both had extended trips planned back stateside shortly after moving here, and we knew that we would want to have a U.S. number for those extended trips. Like I was back in the states for almost two months yeah. shortly after moving here. If you're in the military, one of the options you can do is unlock your phone using your military orders. Go to your provider, just say here it is <laughs> and uh, they'll unlock it allowing you to change providers once you're here you can even suspend your number in the states so anytime you do visit the state you can turn it back on like that mm -hmm. um, but if you're just moving over here as a normal person i would recommend just turning that off and buying something local anyways because everything is so much cheaper here and it's going to be a lot faster but before you just turn it off and switch make sure you get rid of that like authentication code so if you ever oh, like yeah. log into your bank and they're like we sent you a six pin digit via text tell us what it is you have to change that before you change your number because yeah, that's a really good point it is pretty much impossible to get that pin i literally just got that from logging into a youtube account that was not on my regular device google does that like two-step authentication thing so that's a really good point you could really mess yourself up yeah. <laughs> if you just deleted that number there's gotta be a workaround though. Yeah. Moving on to the next question, number three, mail, how does it work? Now this is specifically um, more geared towards the base and for the, our military movers, but essentially you have an APO box or a PO box and it is all done on base. So they set you up, your sponsor should set you up with one prior to arriving. We definitely used it prior to arriving where we were able to mail ourselves uh, specific things that we wanted here 
that we didn't want to give to unaccompanied baggage or TMO. So, or we just wanted it right away. Like there was a gift that we gave to my sponsor because he was awesome. And we mailed that to ourselves ahead of time just so we had it upon arrival. We didn't have to wait for all of our stuff to get here because that can take a little while. But once you're here having that post office box, APO box is amazing. Oh my gosh, so uh, good. Things do take a while to come through the mail, but it is worth it in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, we've done a little bit of house shopping uh, for some items. And one item in particular that stands out was a large cabinet. It was probably a hundred dollars. Oh, the office supply one? The office supply one. Yeah. And when we wanted to ship it here, we were still kind of new. And I was like, oh, we can just ship it to the house. Like, I don't know if it'll ship because there's certain size and weight requirements, mm -hmm. which you'll have to look up. Um, but we were like, oh, it may not ship. So we're gonna ship it to the house. The UK house. The UK house. And if it was to come from the US to the UK house, it was gonna have taxes and fees and go through customs. And it would almost be 300 pounds just for the tax. Yeah, and things. the cabinet's like 90 pounds. Yeah. Wild versus shipping to the PO box. Which has free shipping. And it was that's free. pretty much it. It just takes, um, anywhere from 10 to 14 days usually yeah so um i think that's just been a nice thing is paying special attention to the different places especially stateside that specifically note that they ship apo yes. like there was a rug place that i absolutely love that we i gotta buy one rug from and then they stopped shipping apo and i was like well no more rugs for me <laughs> yeah uh, or there was a technology place that i like to ship from uh, normally they have free shipping, but if you're gonna ship to APO, it was like $6 extra mm -hmm. and they would handle it all for you. So usually pretty simple, but if you, there are some companies that will just be like, nope, don't even try it. Mm -hmm. Don't even put it in. Um, for example, Apple, they won't ship to APO. It's not advised, but some people ship it to family members who then ship it on. And there's a whole thing. Yeah. Not gonna get into that. Next topic, and this kind of feeds very nicely into the whole uh, mail situation, is how do we pay our UK bills? One of the best advice I can give, either coming as a normal person or a military member, get a credit card. That way you can earn points and reward yourself um, so you can go travel Europe and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but to get a credit card with no foreign transaction fees. Mm -hmm. That's gonna help you pay whatever you need to and kind of adjust as you start to figure things out. For sure. Um, but you will eventually more than likely need a British bank account. Um, and instead of going to a traditional like brick and mortar building and going there for the banking, having to have resident and passport and proof of all this other stuff of living here for so long, you can just set up an account with WISE. That's what we did, mm. um, which we'll throw a link down in the description. You can sign up there. Um, basically it, it's made things so much easier. It really has basically it creates a digital bank. You can all mail monitor from your app and you can transfer dollars to pounds to euros, whatever you need. They'll send you a card. You can use it with like Apple pay, Google pay. Um, that's how we pay rent too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they require a wire transfer instead of paying by card. Mm -hmm. Um, and just having it, instant access to that has been really nice. Moving on to our next question, speaking of bills, is do we get paid in dollars or in pounds? Um, this is probably like such a silly question, or at least it felt that way for me when I was first asking it. It felt so silly, but I've sponsored a few people who have also had this question, so it made me feel not as ridiculous. But as uh, US military members, we do get paid in US dollars. And then we do everything Jordan was saying when we need to cross-reference that money into the UK economy. And then there's a lot of times that we'll get asked like on machines, do you want to pay in dollars or pounds? And we're able to work that out as, as we need to. But speaking of bebopping all over the place, talk to me a little bit about passports and no fees. So another advice I can <laughs> Jordan give you. Jordan handles all this stuff. So I'm keep batting it his uh, way. So another advice I can give you. If you're a normal person, you have to have a passport regardless. But if you're a military member, you can get over here with just a no fee. Um, you could technically get a way of getting over here with just your passport. You could also just come over here with orders if you're a military member. But really just get your tourist passport. It'll make everything so much easier. Get your no fee passport if you're a dependent like I am. 
Um, basically, it just extends your stay past the tourist visa that you would have. Otherwise, you would need to leave. And it's a whole hassle once you get here to get an appointment to set up to make sure you get the passport mm -hmm. that's required to stay for a long period of time. Um, and same to be said with just a normal passport. If you come over here with just a no fee or just orders, making Which you that- you can do, but, yeah, and making, I see people do it all the time. Making but. those online appointments or going down to the embassy in London after you're just new here is, take can take a, take a while. There could be some uncertainty. We've heard a couple of horror stories. It's better to do it in the States where it's a lot more organized and managed and mm -hmm. to arrive here without that added stress and Plus, it gives you the opportunity to travel. I feel like everybody I talk to that lives or works on base that is not a fan of the base is all because they go to work, they go home, they stay in their house and that's all they do. And it's like, go out and see the country, go see the other countries. It's so awesome here. So get yeah. that passport. Yeah, absolutely. Topic number seven is another super easy question. And that is just what side do you drive on when you get on to the base? And um, at least that was a question I had and a couple people I've sponsored have had. And I think it's just because in my head, I was thinking like, oh, well, we're gonna be working, you know, US military and like, do you switch? Like, how is that gonna work? No, it doesn't work like that at all. It is an RAF, Royal Air Force Base. So it is all driving on the left, just like you would in any other place. Yeah, and even if you have an American car, you still continue on as normal rules in the UK. Yep, completely. So uh, one less thing to worry about there. <laughs> and the next topic I'm gonna talk about real fast is cars, housing and pets which is a weird combo but the reason why i combine them all together is essentially because we made videos on each of these things extensively so if you have any questions that goes much more into depth with those uh click on the card up above and it'll take you to our pcs playlist but real briefly when it comes to cars us or uk car which one should you bring it is up to you. <laughs> it is really based on your preference. We have one US car, one UK spec car, and uh, it really, it super depends. Depends I, on your circumstance, how far in your lease or your purchase or finance. Do you want a new one? Do you not? Are you more comfortable or not? Yeah, so it depends. But like I said, more info up, up above. When it comes to housing, um, specifically base housing, we made a whole video on just that, going into much detail on it. But really what that boils down to is it, it depends. <laughs> um, so if you want like the US community, if you like the military living, if you want the convenience of being on base, then yeah, maybe base housing's for you. Put yourself on the waiting list. Um, when it came to Jordan and I, we were very passionate about wanting to get further away from the base so that way we could live in the UK community and experience authentically what it's like to be living here in the UK. And I just don't feel like you get that on the base. It's whatever you're after. I know a lot of people with itty bitties prefer being on base. And the last little bullet there is pets. Things are definitely gonna be looking differently here in the coming weeks as they stand up Patriot Express or the Rotator as it's more commonly known, which is basically just a big commercial flight that's gonna be taking people from stateside to the UK and uh, they do ship pets. So I'm and hoping we can make a video on that. It is required if you're coming over here, mm -hmm. you have to have a special exemption to not do that. Um, but yeah, we're really it's hoping we can. changing everything. Yeah, we're really hoping. It, it's good and bad, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll be able to fly it, hopefully. We'll be the judges of and, it's uh, good or bad. <laughs> if, if we're not able to make a video during the flight, we'll maybe do a recap or something. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it in some way. Biggest advice I can give you is put aside money. The cages are expensive. If you are shipping them privately, it's expensive. Start training your pet ahead of time so they can be prepared for the long journey. All right. Topic number nine, Jordan, what do you do if your driver's license is expiring while you're here? One of the best advice I can give you either as a normal person or a military member is to renew <laughs> it. Normal person. <laughs> is to renew it before you come. If you're just a normal person coming over here, you can drive on the UK with your license for about six months. After that, you'll need to get a UK license. If you're a military member, you go through the base and you do a special program. They teach you all the rules and regulations and what is expected of you as a driver. Um, and then they give you the paperwork that basically translates your US driver's license to a UK one. 
and you can go ahead and drive. You'll have to carry them on with you the entire time, um, but for the most part, there's no additional steps required. Um, if it does expire though, like hers has, yeah. um, you can contact your state where they'll set you up with a program and you basically have to provide your military orders and your driver's license information, mm -hmm. uh, your new address that such. And from there, they'll send you a paperwork. So now she has to carry around like four documents with her at all times. Yeah, I mean, they're little, but. Yeah, I mean, so she's got her driver's license, the paper that says it's not expired, her <laughs> Air Force driver's license, and then her like card to tie it all together. So mm -hmm. it's a whole thing. Um, but if you, like ours pretty much expire pretty close. So I just went ahead and did mine as well. Um, but it would make it a lot easier if you're going to go into Europe or even in the UK and you're going to rent a car. If some, you don't have to deal with all that. Some places may not recognize that it's not expired. Yeah, because it's, it's just like a little slip of paper. It yeah, kind of looks fake. It but... would work in the States, but not over here, I don't think. so. Yeah. So um, basically, uh, go to your DMV, your local DMV website. The final question, number 10, is basically about the weather. Um, does it rain a lot there? Does it get to you? That kind of thing. And overall, yes, it does rain a lot here. It rained today even, but it doesn't rain as much as I thought it would when you see England and London and that kind of thing depicted in films and TV. It looks like it's raining every second of every day and it's, it's not that bad. It rains some more here than it did in my hometown, but I don't know. I feel like it's kind of like Florida. Like, it gets it out of its system and then it's done for a while. Um, but it does get dark here. I would say that I was not anticipating. So in the summers, it is gorgeous. Like sun is up bright and early and the sun sets at like 10 p.m. I love it. It's fantastic. But in the winter time, it's the exact opposite. The sun may not rise until 8-ish. Like that might be an exaggeration, but I think late. I've seen it like at that latest earliest i don't know nine o'clock and then setting at like 3 30. yeah so like there's a a lot of times where i specifically like i'll be driving home in the dark and i'll be going to work in the dark and like that can get to you a little bit so um highly recommend you know talking to your doctor maybe taking some over-the-counter vitamin d going out in the sun when it is shining and beautiful and then a lot of people have the sunlight sun sunlight lamps <laughs> that they put on their desk that just helps get you a little bit of of light going in your day to day but outside of that yeah i would just mental health is important so make sure that you're you're staying connected with people that kind of thing and before we close out this video we do have three pieces of advice we're going to offer anybody that is pcsing to england um the first is transformers so this is something that i didn't really know about at all um switching over us and uk voltage was a completely new concept so um i did not know that the base did this but they provide you transformers which are like adapters but way stronger <laughs> yeah so normally there are some things like your phone which are dual voltage which means it can handle both the us and uk and european um electricity um, and there are things that are single voltage that mm -hmm. are only meant to handle what they were designed for in their country. Usually things that draw any sort of heat or require a running motor mm -hmm. uh, for like a, like a baking... Um, mixer. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> like a mixer usually only are single voltage. Mm -hmm. So what the transformer is going to do is be able to take that UK electricity and bring it to a US mm -hmm. level. One of the best advice we can give you is to check your devices for dual voltage or single voltage. Um, basically, mm -hmm. just let you know what you're going to prioritize your little transformers because you only get two per person. Mm -hmm. I so, think it's two per adult even. I don't even think it's two yeah, per that's, person. Yeah, that's fair. But so, um, And these boys are heavy. Like, we should measure it, how heavy it is. It's, yeah. They're not easy to move. So kind of when they're in a spot, we leave them in a spot and they're kind of ugly. So we've also have them hidden throughout the house. <laughs> and this ties into another little bit of advice that we have, which is appliances. Um, Jordan got into this just real briefly, but essentially 
prioritize uh, what it is you're gonna be bringing. So for us, it was not worth our corded US vacuum to be able to hook it up to a transformer in every little spot. So we bought a UK vacuum, um, same thing with like a microwave. They were cheap. We figured we'd buy one, resell it, not a big deal. Um, but yeah, just paying attention to those appliances. And uh, another thing as well is that, and I didn't know this, but this could just be the fact that like we're young in the military life. Because the US military will not ship your refrigerator, your washer, or your dryer over here because they straight up will not work, even with the transformer, I don't think. Um, the, the base offers you one of each. So um, yeah, so we were able to get those from, from FMO and, yeah, set them up and they're all good and we haven't really had to worry about it. So that's really nice. Not bad for rentals, but uh, man, am I glad to soon get rid of those. <laughs> I think it's just because they're still like UK spec and we're used to like double dry. Like, yeah. <laughs> and the last piece of advice that we are going to offer, especially if you still have many, many, many more questions or specific questions for your circumstance is to join a spouse page. We will link the one down below that Jordan uses most often. Um, but I feel like everybody on those pages is they go above and beyond to really help people out absolutely if you're coming over here join one of those quick they have them for all the different bases different communities if there's certain activities that you like or questions there's stuff about pets there's stuff about cars mm -hmm. you can figure it all out there's um and if you're just a normal person coming over here there's <laughs> expat pages there's forums there's posts uh, i'm sure and we're specifically referring to Facebook here, but yes. I'm sure that they exist in all capacities. Yes. Um, and then, you know, if you can't find anything, we're always happy to help. So if you have any sure. questions about what it's like moving here, you can go down to that comment section below and uh, we'll do our best to help you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this helped even one person out there. Um, if you have any specific questions, like Jordan said, uh, just leave a comment down below and we'll try and get back to as many people as we can. Otherwise, we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.